Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to show you how to create a responsive fixed navigation menu. What do I mean by fixed? Well, notice that when we scroll down the page, the navigation menu stays with us. Doesn't matter if we scroll down or up the page. And this is also completely responsive. So when you resize the window, this is what it's going to look like. All right, let's get right into this tutorial. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a pair of header tags. And within this, we're gonna create a container. And within that container, we're gonna create a subcontainer. And these two classes are gonna help us make this responsive on big screen sizes. All right, now let's create the actual nav bar. So we're gonna need a pair of nav tags and let's give them a class name of nav bar. All right, this is where the link to the home page is gonna go. We're going to give this a class name of nav branding, and we're just going to type in dev in here, but this is where the name of your company would go. All right, now we can actually create the navigation menu. So let's create a pair of unordered list tags, and we're going to give these a class name of nav menu. All right, this is our first list item. We're going to give this a class name of nav item, and in here, we're going to create a link. Don't forget to add the hashtag there. And we're going to give this a class name of nav link. All right, and this is going to be for the home page. Let's go ahead and select this list item and copy it twice. And we're going to change this to about and this to contact. All right, now we're going to go right under the unordered list tag there. And we're going to create another class with the name of hamburger. And in here, we're going to create a span with a class name of bar. Let's go ahead and copy that twice. And this is going to make up the hamburger menu. All right, that should do it for the navigation. Now let's go under here. And we're going to create a section basically to mimic an actual website. Let's give this an ID of home. And let's create our container class in our subcontainer class. All right, and I'm just gonna indicate that this is the home section. All right, let's move on to our CSS. All right, let's start this off by removing the default padding and margin. For the body, we're gonna use position relative, and we're gonna give this a height of 1000 VH, and this is just for demonstration purposes to show you that it doesn't matter if we scroll down or up the page, the navigation is gonna stay with us no matter what. For the header, we're gonna use position fixed. We want it right in the top, so we're gonna set that to zero, and we're gonna give it a width of 100%. Let's go ahead and change the color. I'm gonna go with 98 DBC six. For the list items, we're going to use list style none. And for the links, we're going to change the color to black. And we're also going to use text decoration none. All right, now let's make this responsive on big screen sizes. So for our container, we're going to set the width to 1600 pixels. And we're going to use margin auto. And together with our container, our subcontainer is going to take up 85% of 1600 pixels. Now let's also use margin auto. All right, so this is gonna make it responsive on big screen sizes, but, but because we set the width to 1600 pixels, it's not gonna be responsive on mobile devices. So let's add a media query with a maxed width of 1600 pixels. All right, so at 1600 pixels, we wanna set the width of our container to 100%. All right, so this is gonna make it semi-responsive on mobile devices. Let's finish things up here to make it completely responsive. All right, let's move on to our nav bar. 
which is the one that is holding this information. We're going to set the width to 100%, and we're going to give this a minimum height of 70 pixels. Let's also use Flexbox in here. So we're going to use Justify Content, Space Between, and Align Item Center. All right, now let's take care of these links here. So these are located in nav menu. We're also going to use Flexbox in here, justify content, space between, and align item center. And we're going to use a gap of 60 pixels here to give some space in between the links. All right, for nav branding, let's change the font size to 2 rem. That way that link is a little bit bigger than these here. All right, and for the hamburger menu, we don't want to see it just yet, so we're going to use display none and cursor pointer. All right, now let's create the hamburger menu with the little bars. So let's use display block. So it's aligned in a column. I like to use a width of 25 pixels and a height of 3 pixels. And we're also going to use margin 5 pixels on the top and the bottom. That way the bars aren't so close together. And we're going to use a transition of all 0 0.3 seconds ease. Let's also change the color of the links. And I think black is a good color to match with everything else that we got going on. All right, let's move on to the home section. This is very important. We're going to use margin top 70 pixels. Uh, the reason we're using 70 is because the height of our navigation is 70 pixels. So if we change this to 60, then it's going to be right under it. And if we don't include it, then our section is still here, but our navigation is right on top of it because we are using a position of fixed. So make sure that the number you're using here is the height that you gave your navigation. All right, and I'm going to add two more things in here just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to give this a border and I'm also going to give it a height. This is not necessary. This is just to show you what this looks like on a real website. All right, now let's create the actual hamburger. So at a max width of 1024 pixels, we want the hamburger menu to appear. So let's get access to that class. And we're going to use a display block. All right, so at this point, you will be able to see the hamburger menu. Now we want to create the animation that turns this into an X. So let's do hamburger dot active and dot active is a class that we're going to be adding dynamically with JavaScript, but we're going to go ahead and set the settings for it here. That way it's ready to go. All right. For the second bar, which is the one in the center, we're going to use opacity zero because we don't want that one to display on the screen. Let's go ahead and copy this twice. And we're going to change this from 2 to 1, and this is going to be 3. All right, and to create the X animation, we're going to use transform, translate Y. We're going to set this to 8 pixels, and we're going to use rotate 45 degrees. All right, we can copy this. Just paste it in here. The only thing that you're going to add is a negative in front of the 8 and a negative in front of the 45. All right, now let's create the nav menu that appears when we click on the hamburger menu. All right, we're going to give this a position of fixed. We're going to set left to negative 100% because we don't want to see it. And we want it to come off the top by 70 pixels because that's the height of our navigation. 
we're going to set gap to zero flex direction column that way our links are right on top of each other let's change the background color i want it to match my navigation menu we're going to give this a width of 100 percent so it could take up the entire screen let's use text align center and we're also going to add a transition of 0 0.3 seconds all right now for the nav items we're going to give them a margin of 16 pixels on the, on the top and the bottom that way they're not so close together and we're going to add one last thing in here so we're going to add this class with javascript and this is going to set left to zero for our nav menu because currently it's at negative 100 percent so when we activate this it's going to be zero that means we're going to be able to see it on the screen all right let's move on to our javascript all right and here we're going to get access to the hamburger class so let's do document query selector and hamburger and we want to do the same thing for nav menu so let's go ahead and copy that and we're going to change this to nav menu and this as well all right now we're going to add an event listener so when you click this you can actually see the menu so let's do hamburger add event listener and this is going to be a click event All right, so at this point, we want to add those classes that we created with CSS, and we're going to do that with class list and toggle. So in here, we're going to type in active, and we want to do the same thing for the nav menu. All right, so now when we click on this, we should be able to see our menu. And the last thing we have left to do is when we click on one of these links, we want this to go back to how it was. So let's go ahead and add that. So we're going to do document, query selector all, and we have to select all of the links. So we're going to do nav link, and we're going to add an event listener to each one of these links. So to select all of them, we're going to use for each, and let's do n add event listener. This is going to be a click event. All right, so let's type in hamburger class list. Only this time we're going to use remove. Let's type in active in here. Let's copy that, and we're going to do the same thing for an nav menu. All right, let's try this out now. So let's click on this, and now when we click on one of these links, it goes back to how it was. All right, and as you can see, the menu is going to follow us around. It doesn't matter if we scroll up or down the page. And that's going to be it for this tutorial. Please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.